But anyhow, I will uh, remind everybody we're doing a call to action for the Fishing Game Commission meeting on October 8th. Um, in person in Sacramento on P Street at the California Natural Resources Building. If you care about striped bass, if your business is related to striped bass, you need to be there in person October 8th. Um, and we will have a time when we get a little bit closer. Hopefully by next week, I'll be able to get a time. And uh, that way people don't have to sit around all day. I'm going to ask the commission to structure it so that everybody can show up because I know everybody really wants to talk about this topic. Um, this is the slot limit calling for the 30 inch upper end um, change in the regulations. Nothing else will change. 365 days of fishing, two fish bag limit, 18 to 30 inches is the request. As of right now, we're being told that there's not support from it from the Fishing Game Commission because there was threat of a lawsuit from the Southern Water Contractors south of the Delta. They threatened a lawsuit at the previous commission meeting in August and they threatened the commission and the state of California that they will sue them under an EIR, EIS, which is an environmental impact review or an environmental impact study on making that regulation change, which is complete hogwash. And it's just their way of controlling the commission as they always do. And the commission won't argue or advocate over water or anything like that. All they're going to do is just say no to the regulation and the striped bass population is going to continue to decline. So the only way that we stop that is everybody shows up and everybody gets there for striped bass on October 8th, Fishing Game Commission, and we show up and make sure that we have our voices heard and we tell them why we want this. The science, the science shows that it's needed. The science shows that less than 5% of the striped bass population is currently over 30 inches. The science shows that the striped bass population is near historic lows. They believe that the lowest that it ever got was 2015 and 16 was the lowest that we ever hit in population. The 17 and 19 good water years had good cohort reconstruction. And so that's why a lot of you are catching stripers the last, last year, this year, and next year. And you're having good fishing. It's because there was a good spawn. But the problem is, is that we don't have consecutive years of year classes of that. We've only got a couple of year classes. And so it's, it's very funny how we use that science and that same data and that same logic to say, oh, there's not enough sturgeon. We got to close sturgeon fishing. We got to list the sturgeon under the ESA. But the same data, same logic. Nope. Uh, don't believe it for striped bass. <laughs> The, the facts is, everybody, is that the science shows that all anadromous species born in freshwater, go to saltwater, come back to freshwater to spawn, anadromous. All five anadromous species are declining in parallel together. Common denominator, water. Water is the reason that we don't have these fish. If we don't protect the water, we don't have any protections unless the fish are listed. And then if they're listed, we can't fish for them. Winter run, spring run salmon, green sturgeon about to be white sturgeon. So you see what this pattern is happening, folks. If they can't get control over the water, then they come after the fisheries and they start listing our fish. Once fall run gets listed, you can't fish for them either. But they will not come after um, striped bass. And the reason they won't come after striped bass is because that's the whole scapegoat. Because if we list striped bass, then we have to face the music and admit that water is the reason that everything is dying and getting listed everything. So we're not going to list the striped bass. We're just going to, you know, just threaten you to that. We're going to sue you as a commission. If you even try to put in a form of protection, the science shows that even the 30 inch cap will not raise the population. The year of the young index for over 30 years of striped bass is never above five. The year of the young index for those scientists that might be on here year of the young index has to be 15 to 20 for consecutive years in order to even see a boost in a population for striped bass in the California Delta and the California ocean system. Now, I know a lot of you might say striped bass eat salmon and that's a bad thing. Well, that's the argument of the Southern water contractors. So you're falling right in their hands. But when you look at the true science and you really read hundreds and hundreds of pages of documentation, do stripers eat salmon? Absolutely. 
and so do bass, so do catfish, so do sturgeon, so do multiple steelhead, and so do other native species like pike minnow, hardheads, and many other things. You also have avian predation. You also have otter predation. You also have sea lions, sharks, killer whales. I mean, the list goes on and on. Everything eats salmon because salmon is what makes the ecosystem go around. Salmon is the driver of the ecosystem. So if salmon's not healthy, everything else isn't healthy. So that's what you got to understand. And I understand that some of you might not believe that, um, that uh, the striped bass slot limit is the best thing. Um, but if we don't, we're going to lose that fishery as well. And we've almost lost it completely. This last drought almost knocked it out. 17 and 19 saved us, but we're hanging on by a thread because the amount of fish that have been harvested over the past two years is very, very high. And they don't even know how many fish are out there. That's the truth. The truth, nobody even knows what the population truly is. There's zero data on it. Besides flame, which was done by us, um, the same as the sturgeon. So it's the most current data. It's the most accurate data that's out there. Um, but looking at the year of the young index scientifically shows that there's no spikes. Even in that 17 and 19 year, we hit 5%. So we really need to have some type of protection for the bigger breeders. The reasons behind that is water, but it's also contaminants in the water. There's a lot of contaminants in the water that they're fine finding. And if you'd like to look up those studies, go to Dr. David Ostrak, contaminants in the water, striped bass, California Delta, type it in. He worked for UC Davis and also worked for the pathology lab for 30 plus years. You can read his papers. It's all in there. Um, and you can read uh, the Year of the Young indexes in there. You can read some of Dr. Cynthia LeDuc Bloom. You can read some of Dr. Tom Kamen's stuff. You can read other people's stuff. There's a lot of documentation out there. You can find it all on our website too. So everything that you always hear me say on these Zooms or, or lives um, is something that I've read, something that I've experienced, and something that I've confirmed. So if you don't believe what I'm saying please just go to our website, ncgasa.org, buy a quick hat, and then go to the science documents page, and then read as much as you want. And if there's something you need, please just ping us on the website, 